So TikTok. Um, I don't like TikTok much. But I started making TikToks the other day. Well, I made, I don't know, I made TikToks a while ago, but I made like my first like TikTok ass TikTok the other day and I was proud of myself. Here's a clip. So I wanted to add to this young lady's point here and I finally learned how to stitch stuff on TikTok. Maybe I'll make more of these. And so um, one thing about TikTok, if you know YouTube, is that it can be very synergistic, meaning that you can make YouTube content about TikTok content, which will just, it just does numbers. It's just, it's just good easy stuff and after a year really a year and a half of like hour long highly researched three and four interviews per video taking myself to the emotional limits on some of these videos unpacking my own demons dealing with bullshit i did a lot for y'all this year so i'm reserving the right to mail it the fuck in here in December. Please recognize that a lot of your favorite content creators are gonna be just kind of pushing out whatever they got right about now. And just like, y'all gonna have to deal with us. I got y'all in January, I got something cooking. Right now, you gonna take these leftovers. You, you, you get the point, so let's just, let's just get started. We're gonna start with this cat. So this guy has been all over TikTok for the last probably couple of weeks, maybe longer. I, I'm old, so it may just be hitting me um, to the point where he's already gotten canceled for having some prior issues with domestic violence with his uh, boyfriend. This is a queer man from what I understand. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. Um, he also did some low key racist shit. I won't. All right. All right, all right, all right. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the sub, Tess. I won't do it. Chat, move on, move on, move on, move on, move on. Mama. All I'm saying is your beef ain't with me. It's with Mike Tyson, whoever the fuck knocked your lip like that. Oh, come on. Yeah, so before all of that, because I'm not talking about him too much, um, I want to talk about this female gay thing he's supposedly doing. Now, I I'm a gender studies type of person, but uh, I don't know if this is what the female gaze really is. I think they just kind of named it that because it's a man looking at you in the eye like he wants to eat you. Uh, I get it, you know? What's interesting about this is it illustrates just how poorly like most straight men kind of conceptualize what women find attractive. Like, like there's the classic meme where they show uh, the dude that played Wolverine and they show him like on the cover of Men's Fitness and he looks like a roided up, you know, wrestler. And then like a picture of like house and garden or something. And he's, he's holding a cake and wearing an apron. He may not be doing that, but that's like the energy he gives off. It's hard for some dudes to understand that women actually prefer the, the other guy. Uh, and so this is an example of that, but the thirst that this dude's receiving is a little, little odd, little funny. Um, he is very much an average ass white man, but you know, these algorithms and, and social media will make just the most average motherfuckers in the world into stars. We wasn't that deserving to begin with, but you know, hey, let me try my, let me, let me try my best. Yeah, no, nah, I don't. I Next up is this young lady, which is, this one's interesting. We need an immediate freeze on all child support because if a woman doesn't need you, she doesn't need your money. Child support and alimony have to be abolished. We abolish slavery. Y'all, this is a blank book. Look, 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 look. Everything a man wants his woman to say during an argument. Got Everything a man wants his woman to say during an argument. Which is nothing. Hm. My name is Miss Submissive and I'm not running for office. I'm just about to run feminism in the ground. So I don't know if this is serious. If this is serious, it's hilarious. If this is fake, it's hilarious. I've looked through several of this woman's um, videos and like they all have this surrealist tone to them, but she does not break character. 
and if it's a character at all because like the funny thing what makes it so funny if it's not real is that there are numerous women on the internet who are doing this like shtick and i think she's just you know taking it up a notch let me see this is her start this petition to the president of the united states and three others and it's all like so i don't know i don't know i don't know if this is real now let me just say child support as a system is jacked up on numerous levels uh the way the child courts work are jacked up on numerous levels they are in essence anti-male but that's not like the gotcha that manosphere types you know try to make it out to be what it is is another like function of upholding patriarchy because by like if the courts were to create a system that allowed men equal access to children then that would kind of undermine several other social systems that require us to have it in our head that children are automatically better and safer with their mothers which is you know not actually true but like her i i do not know if this woman is serious hold on let me find let me try another one. This feminist stuff is a lie, it's a scam, and I'm literally making it my life mission to bring submissiveness back. It's not okay. So I'm starting to think it isn't real because her skin is too good. <laughs> she looks too well put together. I'm, the most women I know that are like this, or I've seen on the internet, because I don't know no women like this. Most women that I've seen on the internet like this do not look this well put together um like the the house is too clean the 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 curls uh, the the 4c curls are too well conditioned this can't be real i'm sorry it i don't know maybe maybe she will break character at some point in time maybe i'm missing it either way 10 out of 10 for that one bravo moving on i hate when people say they can't stand a war between men and women because that's not a thing it's not a thing. What you have on one side is privileged individuals complaining because women will not be their unpaid servants. And then on the other side, you literally have individuals who have been oppressed um, by the other side their whole lives saying, can you please treat me like a human being? That's not a war. When a privileged class is constantly trying to punch down to the oppressed, that's literally bullying. All right, so this one's complicated. I did a joint with The Conscious a little while ago, and he made the comment that it's not a gender war, it's patriarchy versus everybody. <clears throat> and I like the way that's characterized, and I agree with that as a whole. I think the thing that people don't get that I've said on numerous occasions that I, folks are struggling to like internalize is that patriarchy, while obviously preferring and privileging masculinity and men over everyone else, is not gen... <clears throat> is not actually gendered. And so when we talk about the gender wars, we are mostly talking about men, especially in the black gender wars. We are mostly talking about black men in their, you know, fucking alpha male podcasts and like, I don't know, one third of all black content made on this app. And, and just in general, historically, you've seen black men with or without access to patriarchal power because the idea that there is no black male privilege is a myth like this thing that certain black masculinity scholars are trying to get over to insinuate that black men don't benefit from patriarchy is not supported by the own data some of them have put out there if you know in fact i've been wanting to get into this shit. so uh here's here's a graphic right here that i've seen these dudes use in some of their content to illustrate how black women are somehow more privileged under white supremacy than black men and that black men don't benefit from privilege, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, some of these dudes are PhDs. I don't know where they got their PhDs from. I can't talk shit, I didn't finish mine. I, I'm making too much money on YouTube. Clearly these dudes want to be YouTubers and they're being bad both at research and YouTube. Like you can look at this graphic. Yeah, so as, as this graphic goes down the line, right? Clearly black women are very much exceeding black men in areas of money and education. And that makes sense. It correlates that if you get more education, you will have more access to economic opportunity. Makes perfect sense. But then when we get to the end and we see that black men who are very far behind these black women in terms of education exceed them in income. 
What does that tell you to put my data scientists out there in the street? If black men are lagging behind black women at every level of education, but then we get to the highest levels of education for the first time on this entire graph, they outdo black women. What confounding factors do you think best explain that outcome? Anyway, um, that all said, I'm not feeling the way that this uh, woman is characterizing the black gender wars to be just about a this concept of black men bullying black women. Although that is definitely like the most visible and like, what's the word I'm looking for? Impactful dynamic in play here. And I say that because one, we know that there's like a handful, like we just saw Miss Submissive and I didn't know if she was real, right? Um, but we also have the divester movement and all these other folks that are led by black women that are doing awful things to black men or to other black women, let alone trans and queer people. Y'all saw in the black man's video, I'm not getting back into it. The thing that characterizing like this does that I don't like is that it absolves the white supremacist superstructure over the entirety of the problem. And obviously when we're talking about intercommunal like conflict, the conflict is between two people within community. And that is where most of the energy needs to be spent. But the way that this is constructed allows for a very lazy analysis of black man's behavior that has been very much weaponized by other entities to really reinforce the same problems that affect everybody within black communities. We have to get out of this very lazy framework of analyzing black men's behavior through this deficit lens to just say that black men are just doing this or doing that very much true in a lot of regards very much a problem but this is underplaying the complexity of the problem and i don't want to get too much farther in this problem because i ain't doing no research for this video but y'all know what i'm talking about but my next TikTok actually does a good job of kind of illustrating the point that i'm trying to make so let's jump into that one where that they can emotionally harm men y'all realize these men be lying to y'all when they say that y'all don't hurt their feelings right that's one but also too i read the book the will to change by bell hooks and she said something very interesting she said that the same way men have ego retention defense mechanisms when their ability to provide is challenged women have ego retention defense mechanisms when their ability to nurture is challenged so with a lot of women when they hurt a man and that man tells them that she hurt him first question that y'all ask is how you've harmed him the hurt doesn't get validated but the biggest way a lot of y'all end up hurting men is justifying your emotionally abusive reactions towards him saying he can take it he's a man who bars bars for uh professor odie good, good shit good shit um yeah man listen the type of stuff <laughs> that i think a lot of a lot of brothers deal with um that we don't often like it's the, the, the thing that makes all the you know the whole alpha male podcast wave the most frustrating is that it's invisibly very harmful to black men as a whole because it is reinforcing this idea that the problems in like relationships between black men and women are around these patriarchal submissive not submissive you know nonsensical ideologies when in reality one of the major problems between black men and women is the fact that there is a deficit of understanding the emotional like depth and needs for black men in these relationships on both sides of the equation. And that manifests in so many other forms of toxic behavior. And what he's getting at is something I know a lot of men, feel free to let them know in the comments, have experienced, especially when you, you know, and ladies, keep it real. When you find a man who is emotionally intelligent or at least more emotionally intelligent than what you're used to dealing with, that shit can be a challenge, can't it? Cause when niggas, when like, and, and I, I've experienced this personally, like in life at work and at jobs, when you as a man are in command of your emotions and like understand your emotional wavelength in a way that is, we'll say transgressive to the status quo of how men are supposed to act, what you'll often find is women almost trying to like weaponize patriarchy to put you back into a place that is more normative. And how that manifests is, you know, you have an issue with, uh, you know, an intimate partner and you let them know how their behavior affected you emotionally. And just like the brother said, they'd be like, 
you supposed to be able to take that. You you sound like a bitch. I want to be. I always have to be hesitant whenever I get into these like ways of speaking about men's issues from a non-misogynistic standpoint because the misogynist will use what I'm saying to weaponize their misogyny. That's uh, again the frustrating part about the alpha male podcast wave. Um, but again, as the dude is saying. You know, like I'm, I'm a huge fan of Bell Hooks for this reason, because she's one of the main scholars within the oeuvre of mainstream academic scholarship that actually makes an attempt, an imperfect attempt, but an attempt to engage with black men, not just as a problem. And that's why a lot of black men are starting like this recovery out of patriarchy with a lot of her work. Now, again, going back to that community of black masculine scholars that have found me in and do not love they they boy if they got 10 twitter posts seven of them are about black feminists it, it's almost as if they got an agenda uh, what the fuck and the thing to remember like the thing to remember that is frustrating again everybody should read the will to change by bell hooks everybody not just men but women too because the chapters on patriarchy are so useful for decoupling this men bad ethos that we've allowed to become like the highest form of analysis, especially in, in left-wing circles. Um, she talks about how everyone is raised in a patriarchal household. That's why I say it's genderless. They do not put all the little boys in a room and say, all right, you guys learn patriarchy and then take all the girls in a room and say, all right, you all learn intersectional feminism. Like, no, all of us start with patriarchy. And the thing that you know, these lazy forms of you know, feminist analysis have been doing on the left is that they haven't been forcing a lot of women to engage with the ways in which their behavior, their ideologies, even those who have read the stuff still reinforce these dynamics. And we're leaving it up to the worst people possible to be the ones to point out this problem. Is this as big of a problem? as the ways in which patriarchy tends to affect women and the, the extremes to which patriarchy makes women unsafe? No, not nearly as big, but here's a key word. Is it the norm? Yes. This is a normative expectation around gender between men and women. This is what most men see and experience. And until we like engage with that reality that less people have read bell hooks than steve harvey's book we're gonna keep having problems all right if you haven't noticed everybody it is christmas and for christmas i would like the gift of you all signing up for nebula and curiosity stream after you finish watching this video this may be your first time seeing me you may have watched for a while either way i want to make sure you understand that curiosity stream and nebula are online streaming platforms that offer content similar to what you're watching right now a lot of long-form documentaries short documentaries on a variety of topics can be seen on curiosity stream one thing that i think is very relevant to this video is a documentary how to go viral which is this weird surrealist like attempt to look at what the hell meme culture and the internet is actually in 2022 definitely relevant to today's subject if you are the type or if you know someone who is the type to sit back and just watch stuff that feeds their brain if you miss the old discovery channel if you're my age where they showed actual documentaries about science and history then you'll definitely find value in curiosity stream but on top of that curiosity stream has teamed with nebula which means you get access to my videos and countless other creators videos ad free we don't have to worry about ridiculous copyright rules we can just make the content we've always envisioned to make there's a lot of extra content on there i have extra content that's not on youtube on curiosity stream you can get all of that and help me keep doing what i'm doing for under 15 dollars for a full year's subscription if you sign up using my promo code at the signifier or just click the link in the description you'll not only be getting access to all this content for a full year for a very low price but you'll also be helping the channel and helping to support a lot of great creators that are on nebula i want to say thank you to curiosity stream and nebula for sponsoring the video and now back to the video I still disagree with this take for a variety of reasons. I just feel like a lot of biracial people are still being treated primarily as black by society. Like there's obviously layers where it comes to like colorism and privilege and stuff like that. Because like no one's gonna look at like Wabdad 4000 and be like, oh, well, you're not black because you're mixed, you know? Like no, no one's gonna say that. You probably didn't even know he was mixed. But he is like Filipino and black and he's both of these things. 
All right, so I have been wanting to talk about the absurd biracial isn't black discourse for a long time. It's literally because one of my first videos to get any traction was my video on black men and colorism. And, you know, I'm very proud of that video overall. I'll probably re-engage with that, a lot of that subject matter at, at some point in time. But one of the things that hit me was people saying that uh, Vin Diesel, well, first of those people that were surprised that Vin Diesel was black, which is, I guess he himself is a bad example of engaging with the issue of how we are trying to steal blackness away from biracial people because Vin Diesel clearly does not put a lot of effort into identifying with his blackness. But there are so many comments in that video talking about how such and such isn't black, they're biracial. And then there's some videos on this platform, some by people I fucks with, that are operating on some of the most like underdeveloped analysis that I've ever seen around concepts and construction of race, at least in America. Now I know that being biracial is a different thing outside of America. I know in the UK, there's a lot more of a understanding that, you know, biracial, I think they even call them colored and mulatto is a thing. There's a whole community. There is a category for being colored within South Africa, which is by the way, completely a product of apartheid, but we'll hold off on that. But here in America it's basically black and not black. Now this is not true, obviously, but if you understand your critical race theory, that's what we're talking about. Now, this this is a highly online. This is TikTok, Lipstick Alley, the shade room, like places where you can without showing your face, say really dumb shit in real life, at least in my experience, this is not really a thing. Now, is there conflict between biracial and or light skinned black people and darker skinned black people? Definitely. Colorism is definitely a thing. Is there a major issue with the representation of black women in media, especially? Yes. The, the running joke on Netflix shows is that there basically are no dark skinned black women in the universe of Netflix. And my video talked about the fact that light skinned black men are generally erased from the media eye for many of the same reasons, because the way we see black men and black women is tied to these narratives around what masculinity and femininity really should be. And they have inverse properties when it comes to dark skin and light skin people. So I'm not saying any of this to take away from the fact that colorism is a thing and that representation of black women is definitely not where it needs to be in the media. All of that is true. But you know, it's not true that biracial is a racial category. First off, all race is made up. Like all this stuff comes from colonialism. All this stuff comes from slavery. Like people keep saying, stop following the one drop rule. And it's like the one drop rule isn't really a thing. The one drop rule, if it ever truly was applied, only applied or only was created to make it so the most phenotypically white black people could not participate and get access to white privilege once upon a time. It was never made for Holly Berry. My rule around race is this, whatever the police think you are, if the police are looking for you, whatever they report back to the call center, whatever, that is what you are. Not really what you are, obviously, that's a joke. But the point is how you're perceived racially is one of the most defining factors of your racial experience. So I am never perceived as anything other than a black man. And most black people, even the lighter skinned black people, it's the same situation. And then you have people like Mariah Carey and Tori Kelly who can pass for white or pass for at least non-black. And yet it gets more complicated there and their experiences are gonna be different. The experiences of dark skinned black people and light skinned black people are definitely going to have a lot of complexities and nuances based solely off of how they're perceived in society. Light skinned black people get lower police sentences is one example. Lighter skinned black boys in particular are treated better in schools. There's so much evidence of the fact that your phenotypical traits definitely dictate your experience as a black person. But what I'm getting from TikToks and Lipstick Alley, etc., and I hate to throw shade, I'm sorry, I'm calling a spade a spade. Whenever I get into this discourse, it's very rarely with other black men. It is 
always for the black women and mostly young black women. And just like I hold space for the brothers that are, you know, trapped up in manosphere, misogynistic nonsense, I wanna hold space for these young ladies because they are being erased from the media perspective. This rampant championing of light-skinned black women um, with different phenotypical traits as the image of black femininity, the image of black beauty. And you see whenever you get maybe a Michaela Cole or a Lupita Nyong'o and they're kind of like tokenized as, you know, these black women who people like, these are pretty dark skinned girls or pretty for a dark skinned girl. Like, I do not know what that feels like. And I cannot claim to understand how that feels. But it doesn't make it any more sens sensible to say that Holly Berry or Saweetie or whomever else is not black. The whole concept of you can only be black if your mother was black is basically eugenics. <laughs> so there's complexities there and there's ways that biracial people weaponize being biracial to get away with doing goofy fuck shit that eventually harms black people who are not ambiguous in their racial presentation. But let's just be real. This is a discourse only in the case that it allows certain black people with a certain agenda. I would again argue predominantly young black women, but also some of your hoteps, your hotep adjacent type folks to like make this assertion that black is a genetic disposition which it kinda is, but like, if we were to break black down to these genetic dispositions, a lot of motherfuckers wouldn't be black. I wouldn't be black. My whole, my family wouldn't be the case. My wife did 23 and me, and this dark skinned black woman is 25% white. That shit low key pissed me off. <laughs> Genes are a weird thing. The thing that frustrates me the most is that when they try to use like concepts of slavery, as a product and they talk about the real fact that some of the first biracial children were a product of assaults by slave masters on enslaved african people that is a fact by the logic presented by these biracial people aren't black types we were supposed to reject the one drop rule and i guess just put the leave the child in a forest is that what we, that's what we're going to do? We're going to leave some of y'all great, great, great grandparents. We're going to just like toss them in a lake somewhere that actually probably happened a little bit, to be honest with you. But what really happened because black like, oh, my God, this all comes from a colonial mindset around power and privilege and identity and that. And there's some people that think that we're going to claim power back from racist white institutions by mimicking the types of things they do to us to other people when we get the opportunity and so that instance where a black slave would have had to have borne the child of a white slave master we're not saying act upon the natural instincts that a person bearing a child probably would have which is to take care of and nurture and raise that child we're saying we're not going to follow the one drop rule so we're either going to throw the child in the lake or we're going to excuse this parent from their black cultural heritage if unless they want to excuse their child. It is a stupid, stupid thing done by stupid children. I am sorry. I love y'all. Y'all know I love the babies. But I cannot take this ridiculous ass perspective. <sighs> this is why I write scripts in my videos, y'all. <laughs> All right, um, this is probably gonna be like 20 minutes, 30 minutes of content. I don't know. I hope you still watch it. I hope you enjoyed your time. I'm not gonna see y'all until late in January at the best. And that's all I got for today. Peace. Man, oh man, I remembers back in the days when I used to be a little troublemaker. Miles wasn't having that, and sure I'd rather throw fits. And it was easily solved by the belt or the swift ripping butt skin on the regular. See, times was too hard for her to raise two kids, work a job as a single black woman in the brand. She took care of all our business and did it without a man. I didn't seem to understand just too young to know the complications as a child. Brainwashed by the boxing show, animated war flicks, and giant yellow birds that teach the ABCs, brother, please. 
What I needed was some discipline. Wasn't going to get it, bro, myself or my best friend. Cause he was worse than I in a situation of peer pressure. He never got the belt, just a long lecture. Yeah, you know the type, the sidekick, the trouble. It burst your bubble in the test. Run back to the crib and then blame you for the mess. So mama pulls a lever out with tears rolling down her face. She'd open up her mouth and then mama said it'd be days like this. You got to get your act together and start acting like a man. This is gonna hurt me worse than it's gonna hurt you. So I hope that you understand. Mama said it'd be days like this. You got to get your act together and start acting like a man. This is gonna hurt me worse than it's gonna hurt you. So I hope that you understand. Hey, Papa, yeah. is there moments when you think about your mama and the things she said? Yeah, I do. Sometimes I get lonely. I think of her, but times like that, son. I just kick back in my chair, lined up a square, take a puff off the new port, then take my mind elsewhere. Memories here and there, perfumes in the air. Flip the hourglass, my past is back in my mom's care. Her words was life, I remember that in this sum. The word my mama says still bangs in my eardrum. Not one can explain on who the VB. No matter how old I get, she still, still brings out the kid in me. It's way past my curfew, doing sing with my friends. I be out in the back, smoking blunts with the reverend. All my dogs bang their hats. We laughing at the gun claps. Fathers get mad because their daughters get tapped. But we strapped with the guns. Their sons don't want none. These girls are old. I see right there, your chest is your mom's. Hold up, young world. You get regressed until you're dead. Let's open up your mind to the words your mama said. Who the hell are you, mom? I'm that man in the backdrop. So take your bad ass home before your mom calls the cops. Yo, who is this man? You're not my dad. I'm not your as a matter of fact, vibes, I'm you 50 years from now. Quit playing like you are because your mom's your bodyguard. It's been that way since breastfeeding until the graveyard. You should always love your moms and most of all, you should respect her. That's your guardian angel, your childhood protector. Mama said it'd be days like this. You got to get your act together and start acting like a man. This is going to hurt me worse than it's going to hurt you. So I hope that you understand. Mama said it'd be days like this. You got to get your act together and start acting like a man. This is gonna hurt me worse than it's gonna hurt you. So I hope that you understand.